now that the huge euphoria and hype over the amazing Silent Hill 2 remake has slowed down and people are not talking about it as much, I wanted to make a video ranking how each of the mainline Silent Hill games, including the remake, portray the famous town that gives its name to the franchise. I'll be looking at things like how they depicted both the Fog War and the Dark War, the quality, beauty and aesthetics of the maps both in the streets and within specific dungeons inside the town, and pretty much just how each game utilizes Silent Hill and how they make the player experience the town. I'd also like to clarify that I don't consider any of the portrayals mentioned here to be downright terrible or even bad. I think every depiction of the town has a decent number of positive things and can be considered at least decent or even good, even the ones that have their fair share of downsides. I will also not be including Silent Hill 4 on this list since it is the only mainland game that doesn't feature a full Silent Hill map or the streets of the town as a primary location. But I will be mentioning some interesting stuff about its setting while talking about other games. So, having said that, let's begin. When taken as a whole, Silent Hill Homecoming gives us what is likely the weakest and most disappointing representation of Silent Hill in all of the series. The greater part of the game takes place not in Silent Hill, but in Shepherd's Glen, the smaller nearby town where the protagonist, Alex, was born and raised. Despite the numerous negative opinions I've heard about it, I don't think Shepherd's Glen is bad at all. In fact, considering it's supposed to be a whole new town with its own personal attributes, I believe the few streets we are presented are fairly charismatic, with great other world locations, interesting landmark buildings, new characters presented, and a lot of personality given to them, largely by Alex's lots of flavor text in the early sections of the game. On the other hand, when we get to Silent Hill, considering it's Silent Hill we are talking about, everything looks and feels considerably more characterless and lacking in personality than what I expected. The game carries us to central Silent Hill, the same part of town we've explored in both the original Silent Hill and Silent Hill Origins, but this time it looks substantially different and smaller. Many new buildings are in the place of previous ones, and a lot of the old streets are absent or not completely covered by the lake. At least a part of these changes can be attributed to the town's supernatural powers, reshaping itself to reflect Alex's psyche, as it was clarified by former Konami producer Tom Hewlett. The streets of this new version of Central Silent Hill, even though they are not ugly, they lack the charm that previous entries had, coming across as a somewhat inferior version of the streets of Shepherd's Glen and an inferior version of these same locations in the games we had previously visited them. And the noise effect filter, a hallmark of the series, feels more oppressive than ever during the forward sections in the town. And while sometimes it works, most of the time it seems to only try to kill any kind of attempt at this way creativity in the artistic style. The fog itself also seems to be less compelling this time around. For me, it doesn't succeed at evoking the same mysterious atmosphere, and instead makes the environment appear like it's dry and full of ashes, rather than truly foggy. Most of the exteriors of buildings appear to be covered by the same lack of identity and charm that covers the streets. And besides a side quest to get the rifle in a graveyard, there aren't many remarkable locations that you can enter or even take a look at. Now looking at the main dungeons we get to explore within the town, like the hotel, the prison and the lair, I also found them to be similarly flawed. While many of these levels start off strong, giving the impression that you're about to embark on an iconic journey, they quickly become monotonous and forgettable as you start going through the level. Lacking the constant sense of discovery and intrigue that the dungeons of earlier games provided. That being said, what really saves this depiction of the town and help it make up for many of its flaws are its really nice other world locations. The best example of that is this really neat scene after the prison levels, where everything becomes completely distorted and it results in one of the best presentations of other world Silent Hill streets we've gotten in all of the series. Without being among the best in the series, the rest of the Dark World locations in the town are also pretty well executed. But logically, this is not enough to make up for how lackluster and monotonous Silent Hill looks 
for the greater part of the experience. While I don't think the story of Silent Hill Downpour is as bad as many people claim, and I even like some things about it, I do have an issue with how it portrays the eponymous town. The game is set in a completely new, never before seen area of Silent Hill, one we never even knew existed, supposedly located in the southeastern part of the town, on the southeastern shore of Toluca Lake. This new section offers large new areas you can eventually access and explore, which might seem like an interesting idea, especially since we haven't been introduced to a completely new neighborhood since Silent Hill 2. This new area, however, is for the most part pretty boring and disappointing, and it has a presentation and visual style so unrecognizable that it feels like it could choose as easily be any generic town or even city, as the game seems to depict Silent Hill as a medium-sized city rather than a town. In fact, now that I think about it, it would probably have been better if this area was introduced as a new standalone location entirely. Since, as I was saying, at least from my perspective, this new area never really feels like you are in Silent Hill, or rather, it feels like after exploring and accessing new areas, they are eventually going to take you to the real Silent Hill, but they never did. I've mentioned before that I thought Homecoming had an uglier than usual fog, that appears to resemble theatrical smoke or ash more than actual fog. Well, in Downpour, I also have issues with it, which is much lighter and somehow lacks the atmosphere it used to provide in previous games, so much so that I often found myself forgetting it was supposed to be foggy while I was playing. Unlike Homecoming though, this version of the town isn't even saved by the Dark World, since in Downpour, the other world is restricted to mostly scripted moments within buildings, and even then, save for a few exceptions, the artistic style also falls a bit short in comparison. On the positive side, the game does attempt to bring life to the large town it presents with a lot of optional locations, side missions and references, many of which are related to the protagonist Johnny and his personal story. This amount of detail and the work put into crafting these areas is enough for me to rank this depiction of the town above that of Homecoming, even if, as a representation of Silent Hill itself, it might actually be worse than Homecoming. Despite the effort put into expanding the town, the core issue remains, namely that the town and its art direction feel lifeless and forgettable, which is particularly hurtful, since you spend comparably more time walking through the streets in this game than you do in most of the others. Aside from a handful of mostly optional locations within buildings, there are very few places in this version of Silent Hill that are stuck in my mind. No matter how much time I spend playing, this is the only game in the series where, even after going through it several times, I still found myself getting lost and failing to recognize any street or part of the map, something that never happened to me in the other games on this list. Silent Hill Origins takes us once again to the streets of Central Silent Hill, recreating a small portion of the map we had seen in Silent Hill 1 and expanding it several streets farther south. Without being extremely innovative or ambitious, and despite being limited by the hardware limitations of the PSP, the game succeeds in giving us a really nice and more detailed version of some familiar location, as well as a really fine looking town overall, which is essential considering you spend a considerable amount of time walking the streets during various sections of the game. Surprisingly, unlike several other titles in the franchise, there are several stations where I found myself preferring how Origins looks in the foggy world over the dark world. While the game does have locations and dungeons that look fantastic in the other world, sometimes I also found it to be very irregular or inconsistent in terms of quality, having many stations where I found it to come across as just a darker and less friendly version of the fog world without adding much in terms of unique atmosphere or detail. When it comes to the different dungeons the game takes us through, I believe they are all enjoyable and pretty well designed. However, I feel I have to mention that if I consider what I would expect from a great prequel, I do believe the world in this game fails or doesn't fully succeed at giving us a broader view of how Silent Hill and the mysteries around it were, as well as how the town might have looked like during its prime or glorious days. Aside from the burning Gillespie house in the beginning, we don't get to see many locations that are pivotal, or at least decently important, to the Silent Hill lore. 
By comparison, Silent Hill 4, despite only featuring a few areas on the outskirts of the town, introduces locations like the Water Prison and the Wish House Orphanage, and these settings do a far better job at expanding the understanding we have of how the cult and the Silent Hill world work than any location in Origins. That being said, as is the case with all mainland entries, excluding Homecoming and Downpour, I still really like and enjoy the portrayal of the town of Silent Hill in Silent Hill Origins. I believe it has a great atmosphere, beautiful locations, and stands as one of the best looking games I have seen run on the PSP. When talking about the Silent Hill 2 remake, I want to remain very conservative with both the things I liked and the things I didn't since my thoughts and feelings about it are still very fresh and my opinion on many aspects of it could easily evolve in the next few weeks, either for better or worse. In this remake, we finally get to revisit the streets of Silent Hill two console generations after the last main release. And if I try to view it as a standalone game or from the perspective of someone playing this as the first entry in the series, the atmosphere and setting are really good we are seeing a fog cover, empty town with modern graphics that looks great and creates an immersive atmosphere that definitely grabs your attention and can engage anyone playing it. But for someone who's played and loved the original Silent Hill 2 and is familiar with the whole series, there are certain aspects of this portrayal of the town that leave me with mixed feelings or aspects where I feel the town doesn't quite reach the same level of atmosphere, charm, aura or immersive quality and quality in general that the original game had. While the streets and dungeons look beautiful, they are very detailed, and you can tell a lot of love, work, and effort went into them. I don't think they achieve the same level of distinctiveness and uniqueness that was present in the original and other entries. Even with the characteristic foggy environments, a lot of locations appear to me like they could have been taken from many other modern games, like, say, Alan Wake 2, The Last of Us, or the Resident Evil 4 remake very different from the older games, which had such a distinct artistic style that you could never mistake them for anything else. As expected, and probably desired, for a remake of a 23-year-old game, this version reimagines the structure, shape and appearance of almost every major street, dungeon, building and room in the game. And some of them have even been swapped out for entirely new places. The problem for me though, is that several of these changes, especially to smaller but iconic spaces from the original, seem to have been for the worse rather than for the better. And in some cases, it seems like they were changed just for the sake of changing something, when keeping them closer to the original would have probably worked better. Some of the most obvious examples of this are the bowling alley and the places surrounding it. The building is still enterable as an optional location, but in the story, it was replaced by a boring and forgettable movie theater that feels less interesting than similar places we've seen in Origins, Shadow Memories, and even Downpour. The spot where we meet the first monster, along with the muddy path leading up to it, that was also partially shown as a glimpse of the past, but the story changed it into a generic dark room in an equally generic house. And like so, I've noted plenty of other small examples like this throughout the game, where classic spaces from the original have been replaced or modified in ways that don't evoke nearly the same impact as the original locations. Now, I realize I may be sounding too negative when I say I intended to be conservative in my critique. So, with that in mind, I want to say that I still believe the Silent Hill 2 remake, having the great source material it has to work from in the first place, does a pretty good job at bringing the town of Silent Hill back to life and finally satisfying our desire to return to Silent Hill after so many years. The depiction of Silent Hill here presented in Shattered Memories is particularly challenging to compare directly with any other in the series. This is because the game is set in a separate universe and timeline, entirely independent from the rest of the games. What it aims to be as a video game is very different, and so is what the town is expected to be 
and what it tries to represent and deliver to the player. The game gives us a fully renovated map and geography of the town. It reimagines several iconic locations from earlier titles, although these reinterpreted spaces aren't static either. Many of these buildings, as well as others you can access, will change their appearance based on the way you're playing the game, which gives a nice sensation of the town, feeling like a personalized experience created for you. This version of the town also introduces heavy snow, which might be considered as a peaceful and thematic substitute for the iconic fog, and what could be called the ice world or frozen world in place of the other world or dark world. These two new settings have a very distinguishing and unique style that looks amazing at many sections in the game, and they really don't have much to envy when compared to many depictions of the foggy world and the dark world I have seen in some of the other games. Despite some very specific weaker locations and stages where the map design feels a little less inspired, I think Shattered Memories stands out as having one of the best settings in the series. It has an enormous attention to detail and a beautiful world that successfully reflects what the game is trying to portray. So it gets a pretty high spot on the list. At number 3, I play Silent Hill 2, the original one, and from this point onward, the positions on the list could easily be swapped without much issue, as all of the remaining games brought to life an iconic town and gave us truly memorable locations. Just like in the remake, in Silent Hill 2, we are introduced to the town right at the very beginning of the game, during the also iconic opening monologue. From there, for the first time, we get to meet a different remote area of Silent Hill, named Stout Vale located southwest of the area from the first game, on the southwestern shore of Toluca Lake. In this game, we witness one of the biggest and most impressive graphical jumps in video game history. The foggy streets of South Vale are among the most immersive and hypnotic ever seen in the series, with the fog itself looking more intense than ever. It also shows some of the most bizarre and creative versions of the other world, which manages to remain terrifying and depressing without even needing to resort to the aggressive hellish and often reddish appearance seen in most of the other titles. Although it may seem irrelevant today, Silent Hill 2 was also the first in the series where we could encounter other characters in the town during gameplay, and even get to explore the town alongside them. I assume some people may complain that Silent Hill 2, unlike Silent Hill 1 and other titles, only shows you the South Bell area, which is relatively small, and that it doesn't have many big spaces to explore, and almost no optional location to enter at all. But most of this criticism can be countered by noting that the game is intentionally designed to be linear, with most of the gameplay and playing time intended to take place within individual dungeons, each of which is extremely detailed and well executed. And in addition to that, the one part of town we do get to play in is also incredibly detailed and gets almost fully utilized and explored in depth when you have completed the game, as well as the Bond from a Wish scenario, without even having the need for side quests or optional buildings. And it's also worth noting that having more streets to explore and more optional locations to enter isn't necessarily a good thing, as this can end up feeling monotonous and mostly lifeless, like in Downpour. As I believe most would agree, the game that created Silent Hill deserves a high spot on a list of the best portrayals of Silent Hill. Silent Hill 1 brought an impressive world to life, allowing us to explore a terrific 3D ghost town with several different maps, monsters constantly trying to kill you, and lots of hidden secrets and stories. All of this achieved in early 1999. This game introduced most of the defining features of the town that have persisted throughout the series, and were later updated and reshaped but very few times improved upon, like the emblematic fog world and dark world, even though the former was likely not created intentionally, as well as the signature design of broken, fragmented streets and that of a town with a playful personality that constantly tricks both the protagonist and the player with its continual unpredictability. Although it is not necessarily an element that every game needs to have, Silent Hill 1 is one of the few titles in the series that encourages the player to explore the town on his own, not only by placing items around the map, sometimes in places crucial to the game's story, which we might never discover without investigating, but also by making it possible to get better endings if we took the time to look around. The map of Silent Hill 1 also introduced 
and is home to many of the most recognizable and emblematic locations in the series. And while there might be some very few stages within certain dungeons where the setting might seem slightly less inspired than the rest of the game, Silent Hill 1, even over 25 years after release, still stands as having one of the most amazing depictions of the town of Silent Hill, and it remains as one of the most atmospheric and immersive video games of all time. Even if I'm pretty sure this can be a very controversial opinion, right now, I consider Silent Hill 3 to be the game with the best portrayal of Silent Hill in the entire series. But, as I've mentioned, I could easily switch the positions for the top 3 in any way, and it wouldn't be much of a problem for me. But as I was saying, putting Silent Hill 3 in the first spot could be seen as a dumb or even provocative opinion for several reasons. Primarily, because only half of the game actually takes place in Silent Hill, and it reuses a significant portion of the hospital dungeon from Silent Hill 2. Along with the entire open streets area, for not only a part of the west south Bell section of Silent Hill 2. In addition to that, there are no new enterable buildings, and several ones from the second entry are no longer accessible, and the game also removes the ability to collect items or memos while exploring the streets. But, this list is based on what I consider to be the best depictions of the town of Silent Hill, and I believe Silent Hill 3 has the most complete and ultimate setting in the series, even if it isn't even close to being the most innovative or revolutionary one. Silent Hill 3 not only has some of the most superb graphics I've seen run on a PS2, and looks particularly incredible when compared to other games released near that time, but it also has what I consider to be the best art direction and use of color in the series. And despite the aforementioned recycling, the reality is that once you finally arrive in Silent Hill, every single detail looks incredible. The town feels as foggy and desolate as ever, but Heather gives life to every corner with a great use of flavor text. The places we revisited from Silent Hill 2 look amazing. And the new areas introduced, like the lakeside amusement park and the chapel, look even better and stand among the most memorable locations we have seen. Another notable improvement worth mentioning about Silent Hill 3 is how it utilizes the other world during gameplay, giving us what are likely the most insane and terrifying stages we have witnessed in this dimension of the town. So, with all of this in mind, I believe Silent Hill 3 has merits to be considered the best and most complete portrayal of the town of Silent Hill that we've seen so far. Will I change my mind after future playthroughs? Maybe. Will my opinion on the remake or any of the other games on this list change as time passes? That is very likely. Thanks a lot for watching and feel free to leave a comment on what you think of this list and what disagreements or different opinions you have about the games I ranked.